Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer. It's Wednesday the 13th of May. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender, the Senior Pastor of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church here in Northampton. Thank you for joining me today and it's a glorious day. There's cloud around but uh, in a gentle breeze but it's still uh, pleasant. The sun's in the sky and uh, trust that wherever you are today you'll know uh, a good start to the day. We're continuing on our morning prayer reading through the Sermon on the Mount and then tonight at 9 p.m. we'll continue uh, our prayer by reading through again sections of the eighth chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans. Uh, be glad if you could join me then. But for now let's bow our heads and pray and remember the presence of the Lord with us now and commit ourselves and those we love into God's keeping and protection. Psalm 124 If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away, the torrent would have gone over us, then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like the bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Thanks be to God for his word. Let us pray. Lord God, our Father, in your gracious love, draw near to us now as we reach out to you. We thank you that you are our help and that you are our hope. We acknowledge that we are completely dependent upon you and pray that this day you would revive us by the power of your Holy Spirit and lead us into a deeper relationship with you. Help us to trust you this day, Lord. Strengthen our faith and make us sensitive to your gentle promptings. Guide us with your truth and give us the gift and the grace of obedience. Open our eyes to the needs of others and inspire us to show the love of Christ and to share with them the treasure of your gospel of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us confess before the Lord our lack of love and our need of his grace. When we lose patience, when we are unkind, when we are envious, when we are rude or proud, when we are selfish or irritable, and when we will not forgive. Have mercy on us, O God. Help us not to delight in evil, but to rejoice in the truth. Help us always to protect, to trust, to hope and to persevere, so that we may see you face to face and learn to love you as you love us. May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time for amendment of life, and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we read together the seventh chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning to read at the twelfth verse enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the road is easy 
that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow, and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Thanks be to God for his word. I don't know whether you've ever been through a time of difficulty, of testing of your faith, testing perhaps of your confidence in God. Maybe you feel that it's too much effort to remain faithful to a God who at that particular moment feels silent or absent. Of course, real Christians never have such doubts, do they? That ill-defined group of people who exist over there, they, they, they live comfortable, faith-filled lives. They're missionaries, they're, they're clergy, they're leaders, they're bishops, they're regional ministers, whatever they may be. They're our spouses our children, our parents. It's okay for them, but we struggle on. And sometimes the road is hard. Sometimes the gate is narrow. Whenever I read that phrase, I can't help but think of uh, Pilgrim's Progress. You know what? To be assailed by those feelings is not uncommon for all Christians that the road is hard and the gate is narrow and Jesus told us it would be so what he's telling us is not that it's so hard to be a Christian, though sometimes it's hard to be a disciple, yes. But as with any journey, any expedition, any sense of moving uh, along a path that has not been taken by you before, when the road is difficult. That's a contrast, of course, to the easy path, which takes no effort at all. If any of you ever climbed a mountain, maybe some of you have collected Wainwrights. If you don't know what that is, perhaps you can look that up on the internet. But maybe you have uh, set out on the journey you've had to plan for it you've had to prepare for it and of course to start with it's not too bad but it may become of course more strenuous as the journey goes on but of course so much of life and so many people make no preparation for daily living they make no plans they have no goals They have no aim. Two quotes I want to leave with you this morning. The first is this. If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. It's so easy in life just to meander. What's your goal? What's your aim? Can you fix your eyes on that gate? I see a gate in the distance. Have you fixed your eyes on something recently and said, that's where I'm going? And whatever may get in your way, I'm going to pursue that. I'm going to pursue that goal in my life. In seeking for my character to become more Christ-like, whatever it may be, I'm going to go that way. And the second is this. Preparing recently for a series of sermons, I read this. Pain is the high cost of growth. 
And if you're going to climb a mountain, you don't just begin by picking the tallest mountain and saying, there, I'm going to climb that one. You train. The Apostle Paul talks about training for godliness. And sometimes the training is painful. But to build endurance and strength, sometimes we have to push ourselves and we have to test ourselves. And sometimes that testing may be painful. But knowing that God will allow nothing that will ultimately destroy us, but he, in, he will work for good in all those who love him, we can be assured that he will not only watch over us, but accompany us on life's journey. So set your eyes today on whatever may seem as a narrow gate and walk along a hard path because it leads to life. And Jesus himself said that he had come to bring us life in all its fullness. Let us pray. Firstly today, we pray for churches in rural communities, villages throughout our county, throughout our nation. And remember too, churches in isolated communities and situations, praying that God would give them creativity, perseverance and imagination as they seek to be the presence of Christ, the light of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too today for the Arabian Peninsula. We pray for Christians throughout that region. But especially today, we pray for women who are forced into marriage against their will who are trafficked or sexually exploited and ask the Lord to strengthen the hand of those who work for justice for those who are oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, teach us to walk in your ways more trustfully, to accept your truth more faithfully, to share your life more lovingly, so that we may come by the power of the Holy Spirit as one family to the kingdom of the Father where you live forever and ever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer to the Lord our own prayers, intercessions and intentions now in the moment of quiet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We share together in saying the Lord's Prayer in whatever language or form is common to us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, with those whom you love, with God's people everywhere, this day and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you for joining me this morning for prayer. Please stay safe today. Please pray for those who have returned to work uh, in whatever form or capacity. Pray for those who are continuing in work and responsibilities. And pray for one another in whatever you're doing today. Please pray for me. Thank you for your prayers. I look forward to seeing you this evening at 9pm. Good day and God bless you.